Form Labs makes uh, the Form 1 Plus, which is a desktop stereolithography 3D printer. Um, we don't just make the machine, though. We make software that drives it. We make materials that go in it. And we make a post-processing system. So we try to make an end-to-end -end system that, um, that gives you really great uh, results. And uh, you know, fr from the beginning, that, that's been a big part of what we do. In addition to bringing stereolithography technology to desktop, we're trying to build the whole, the whole system because people don't need the technology. They need the parts. Um, and so what, why stereolithography and, and what, what's special about our product? Basically, um, stereolithography is known for the best detail and best surface finish of basically any 3D printing process. So this is just a comparison of a few uh, of the same part on, on, on a hobbyist FDM machine on the left and then a uh, industrial stereolithography machine on the right and a Form 1 Plus in, in the middle. So we produce uh, parts sort of similar to what you might get out of a several hundred thousand dollar machine but for, from a three thousand dollar machine on your desktop. Um, so where have we gone? What, where, what's our background? Um, so we, we're a little over three years old now and um, you know, we're really well known for having this uh, successful crowdfunding campaign. At the time, um, uh, I'll, I'll, at the time we started shipping units, uh, that was that was early in 2013, and uh, we we had sold uh, three million dollars of machines on Kickstarter. We hadn't shipped one yet, and we were about 20 people, and we were focusing on the U.S. Now, about a year and a half later, uh, we've sold and shipped several thousand units. Um, uh, Terry can maybe uh, help me with this one, but I, I believe we sell more 3D print, more stereolithography machines than all of the stereolithography machines combined now. Um, and uh, we've shipped an upgraded version of our product. We're about 100 people, and we're selling to most of the places that buy 3D printers. So yeah, let's go back to that, uh, that crowdfunding campaign. We launched our product on Kickstarter, and um, and uh, that's how a lot of people first learned about us, and that's sort of, you know, we're the Kickstarter 3D printing company. But uh, since then, um, what, what I think that's really exciting that's happened really in the, in the past year is that we're still the Kickstarter 3D printing company, but that's because we're actually helping uh, a whole lot of other uh, small, small crowdfunded product development projects happen by, but, and they're getting designed with the Form 1 Plus. So this is, um, this is a, a collection of some of the, uh, the projects we found that, that were built with the Form 1 Plus, and it's pretty awesome to see the range of, of things going on here. Um, can you see my mouse there? Well, in the upper, in the upper left, there's um, a laptop by a guy named Bunny Huang, who's actually a, an advisor and has worked with our uh, company. That's actually something that's pretty interesting that people have been doing with, uh, with the Form 1 Plus is, is making these stop motion movies where they print out many iterations of um, of the uh, of the character and and you know, make a movie out of that, um, but but what's really awesome is just the the range of things going on here. There's products, there's movies, there's uh, even in the, in the lower right corner, there's uh, actually the first wearable vibrator. So we're covering a lot of ground. Um, so so what yeah what did it you know what did that process look like uh, going from crowdfunded uh, 3D printer to to helping others uh, do that. Now we know how, how fortunate we were in, and how well um, our, our launch went. And uh, uh, it, it was, um, it was really, it, it's really, it's probably hard uh, for you guys to imagine um, what it felt like for us because at the time we were maybe 10 or so, 10 or 15 people and we had almost no kind of contact with the outside world. Nobody knew what we were doing. We were kind of in stealth mode. And then uh, uh, literally overnight, we, um, we launched this product. And th this is two days, or two, this is on the third day of the campaign when we crossed a million dollars. And we were at our first uh, trade show at, at Maker Fair. And so that, uh, it was an unbelievable uh, first, first couple of days to be just Thrown, thrown out there, and then have uh, the world really uh, like what they, you know, what they saw. Um, 
And so th this is actually the, the sales by day. And the re reason I show this um, that's pretty fun is on the first two days, I think we were uh, the third largest 3D printing company after Stratasys and 3D Systems. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, and the, the, you know, the press was amazing. We were in every, every single uh, uh, tech press around the world. You could see uh, all these languages. Uh, it was really exciting. And so that, you know, there was, there was a month we were on Kickstarter at the end of October, and, um, and uh, that was almost like a honeymoon period. But uh, things got, got very real very quickly. So about one month later in November, long before we had shipped a single product, uh, the headlines changed from this to, to this. Um, I got a call from Avi Reichenthal and said, uh, we're suing you. Um, and, you know, on top of, we were in the middle of dealing with the fact that suddenly we had to make a whole lot more machines and grow the company much faster. And, uh, and to, be, to be hit with something like this, where most people were telling us, you're screwed. You know, you're not going to be able to raise any more money. Customers are going to be afraid to buy your machine. Uh, nobody's going to want to work for you. Uh, that, that was that was a tough day in the office. Um, in the end, this this really taught us though is, it, I think we, we were good from at the beginning. We we were, we knew the importance of staying focused, but this really tested our ability to, uh, to, you know, be able to put our heads down and get stuff done and and not worry about the noise around us. And combined with the fact that um, yes, it probably was going to be harder to, to raise money anytime soon. We had to get very far with, with, uh, with, with uh, what we had at that time. Another you know, interesting kind of episode in the growth, that, in the growth of the company that, that really, um, I think, also con contributed to, to where we are now is, uh, uh, is this, this documentary that, that many of you saw. So actually, the, that story for us started exactly two years ago at CES, maybe, maybe Wednesday at CES, I don't know. Um, it, the, the documentary crew uh, that was interested in making this movie about uh, 3D printing, they, they came around and met us at our booth. At the time, two years ago, there were about three or four 3D printing companies at CES. Um, today, there's probably 30 or 40 or something like that. And, um, and they said, you guys seem interesting. Um, would you know? Would you mind if uh, if we film you guys? And you know, as I mentioned, we 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 we've done a really good job of staying really focused, and and we know that how important that is. And so that was uh, that was a really unusual thing to consider. Like, you know, is it a good idea to have a, a film crew running around the office and interviewing people and uh, asking them questions while you're while you're trying to catch up with the thousand machines that you sold? Um, and you know, eventually, I think we, we, we spent enough time with them that we, we decided that these guys are, are going to tell a fair story, and uh, you know, what could go wrong, right? It's not like um, you know, they're going to get video of your parents saying embarrassing things about you and then put that on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but uh, you know what, what? What really turned out to be really um, amazing for us is that they they basically made uh, a home video for our company, and that's something that most people don't get to have. They they captured you know what it was like during that, that really uh, you know really tough uh, year where we were we were growing up, and um, and it's. And what, what I'm, I'm so thrilled with is, in, in the end, you know, I think they, they actually did a, a pretty good job of, uh, of uh, capturing what, what it was like. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, we, come out, we come across good in the documentary, but I also think it was, it was quite accurate. And, and that's, that's turned into a really amazing, um, uh, really amazing thing for us, both in terms of uh, Getting more uh, press and, and marketing, et cetera, but also uh, hiring and, and building a team, and uh, you know it's really really helped uh, building our reputation that way. And I think the the lesson you know is that 
that uh, people actually appreciate, people actually care about who you are internally inside the company, and, and that's something that um, customers and prospective employees and, and things like that really value. So that, that's, that's been amazing for us. So, um, it, you know, I, I think that the, the team you saw, um, what any of you who saw the documentary know, you know, could tell is that we had a group of people who were really passionate and excited about what we were doing. And you know, what we were doing during uh, most of the time they were filming us was trying to ship the Form 1. And, um, and so now, you know, we had kind of, in addition to catching up, uh, you know, and selling way, and shipping way more machines than, than we were expecting to, we now added on a lawsuit plus a documentary crew to the, to the challenge, but uh, we still had to get it done. So um, we didn't realize how different this product was from things that are out there. You can't go to a contract manufacturer who makes desktop stereolithography machines. Actually, at the time, you couldn't go to one who makes desktop 3D printer, or really even 3D printers. So we had to figure out a lot of uh, things along the way. And w one of the big challenges we had were um, component issues. So we had very specialized components like uh, these laser modules that, um, that we had to build at very low cost but still achieve uh, sort of similar performance that you might get out of a $10,000 part in a high-end stereolithography machine. And it turned out um, that we didn't get some of those things right and we had a major problem early on with uh, um, getting modules that died early or had poor quality. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a picture of what we called the wall at our factory where printers were piling up that had, uh, had defects or weren't passing print test for unknown reason. Uh, and you know, at some point there were several hundred machines on this wall. And it was, you know, it was basically like a looming reminder of, of how behind we were. <laughs> and uh, um, so that, and what, we, what, what this forced us to do um, is very quickly build a, a, a really excellent customer support team and deal, you know, own the problems we had. And so we did things like we extended the 90-day warranty we had uh, uh, to a year. And, um, and you know, through this, we, we emerged to basically have the, uh, according to 3dhubs.com, I think we have the, the most highly rated customer support team. Um, and so that we, I think we kind of took this uh, challenge and turned it into something positive. Uh, this is Charlie, the form Labrador on customer support duty here. Um, so, um, you know, what, what's next, or, or we're, we're bringing it up to today. Uh, six months ago, we launched the Form 1 Plus, which is a, an updated machine with a faster print speed, better quality, uh, higher reliability. Um, and one, one thing we did, um, because we had um, so many of these uh, crowdfunding supporters who had, who had been behind us um, from the beginning, is we offered... Uh, an upgrade program essentially at cost where you can ship your Form 1 back in and get it upgraded to uh, the Form 1 Plus level. And, and we've been amazed to see the number of people uh, taking us up on that offer. Um, it's been really successful. Uh, we've also released a, a set of functional materials to uh, so bring our total set of materials now to six. Uh, in the middle there's the flexible resin. Um, and on the right is a castable resin for, for jewelry applications. And this is really cool because now we're getting to take the machine and use it as a platform and expand, with the same machine, expand the number of people and the number of use cases you can, you can do with it. Um, the other thing we, we just announced is uh, new um, smart sports structures. And this has been a, a huge effort um, on the software team to basically reduce the sports structures that are required in stereolithography down to uh, uh, reduce the volume that they use, which increases print speed, reduces cost, and also actually uh, improves the print quality. Uh, and this, this is a, something we're really proud of because um, you know, it's something we didn't even fully consider from the beginning that, that how big of a component that software was, and now it's probably one of our, our strongest points. And uh, then the last thing uh, is a, a new resolution for the new year. So we are uh, now printing at uh, 200 microns. And for the most part, we talk about uh, stereolithography being 
higher resolution, higher detail uh, than FDM machines, but what, what we haven't talked about too much, and now is a good time, is uh, that it's actually faster than, than uh, desktop FDM machines as well for, for the same settings. So these are the same parts at 200 microns, and it's taking less than half the time as a, um, some typical FDM machines. Um, but these are all um, basically you know, features and components, and, and what, I, what we're all really the most excited about is seeing the outpouring of, of uh, things that our customers are doing with the machine. Uh, so here's just, just a really cool, a few cool examples. Um, this is uh, Sutru, which is um, a new type of uh, uh, surgical suturing device that, that's been uh, prototyped almost completely with a Form 1 Plus. And you can see like some of those little white uh, pulleys and gears are, are printed, and that's something that you need really high detail. Um, but what, what Sutru told us is that um, it's really changed the way they developed because the previous, previously they were using service bureaus and used to kind of one or two week lead times to get a part back. Now they're iterating on a daily basis and it's, it's, uh, it's changing the way they work. Um, but the, the range of stuff we see from our customers is, is kind of incredible to see all of it coming off the same machine. So here is um, uh, an Austrian guy uh, who is printing these uh, large-scale insect models for museums. So this thing is actually over a meter long and printed in, I think, nine, nine different parts. And he sands them and finishes them and paints them and makes just these incredibly beautiful sculptures. And uh, what, what I think is um, the, the most exciting about these examples is that uh, they don't really look like 3D prints. They don't look like what most people are making on desktop 3D printers. And actually, the people who are making them don't really care primarily about 3D printing. They care about the work they're doing. And they care about the, the things they're building. And, and that's really exciting. We, we'd be happy uh, if, you know, if, if people didn't, didn't, the less they have to think about using a 3D printer, the more they think about what they're doing. That, that's, that's really the goal we're trying to achieve. So, uh, you know, just, just to wrap it up, um, most of what I showed here, um, most of what we've done has been with a team of 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. We're now about 100 people. Uh, so we've got a lot of exciting things coming. We're really just warming up. Thank you. <laughs>